you there? Hey, what's up? Hey, Raquel, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. I know you're super busy, you're traveling, so this means the world. Um, as you can imagine, we've been talking about you all show long with all kinds of different people, but uh, to hear from you um, is very special. So thanks so much for doing this. First, most importantly, how are you feeling right now? How is your health? Uh, you know, I feel really good. The medical care in uh, Brazil was a really rough experience, so we tried to rush home to the States so that way I could get proper medical care with looking at my leg and stuff like that. Um, because I think that in the first round, that first kick that I took, uh, she nailed the exact spot that I previously broke my leg in. And the minute that I went to go stand up, it felt like my leg was broke again. So, you know, it was a it was an injury that I was trying to weather through. And in Brazil, I mean, we got zero answers after the fight. And I was in the ER for five hours waiting for it. Um, so I just made the decision to hurry up and get back home. So I'm kind of bouncing around from doctor's appointments today. So yeah. you don't know what the state of the, the leg is right now? You don't know how severely hurt it is? Yeah, we have no clue. Um, we, uh, I'm getting x-rays and uh, MRI in about 45 minutes. Okay, and, and how about your face? Uh, it, it looked like your, your nose was obviously bleeding a lot. Did you break your nose? Did you suffer any other injury? Uh, my nose looked worse than what it is. It was a cut just right on the bridge of my nose that needed three stitches. And that's it? No other damage to your face? No, you know, I mean, Amanda, she's a tough fighter, and she, it was overall, it was a fun fight. It was a rough fight, uh, just given right off the bat in the first round, she caught my leg. But, uh, you know, I mean, I'm pretty tough myself, and everything else that she had to offer wasn't phasing me too much. It was just uh, the excruciating pain from the leg injury that um, it really whooped my ass. And you were feeling that in rounds two, three, four, and five. You, you, you felt it right away that something was off. I felt it the minute I stood back up. She, the, as soon as it made contact with my leg and uh, I, my legs went out from underneath me, as soon as I tried to stand back up, it felt the exact same way when I originally broke it. And so it was a kind of a terrifying feeling, just given the fact that I still had about 24 minutes left in a fight. And then she nailed it a second time. And that pain that just sunk in made me want to throw up. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was from the very get-go. Wow. Um, and, and do you think she was targeting that? Not to say that she was dirty or anything, but, you know, that's her game plan. Do you think she knew where you were hurt and was going after that? You know, everybody knew where I was hurt. And, I mean, whether that was her game plan or not, uh, she did. She executed a plan that she needed to do. And, you know, I mean, we're very aware that Amanda throws kicks like that anyways. Um, I expected her kicks to be a little bit higher. So the fact that she went towards the calf was a little bit more surprising. But, I mean, it's a fight. Okay, and now obviously the, the moment that everyone has been talking about and weighing in on, in between the fourth and fifth round, uh, we saw on television that you told your, your corner, you stood up and turned around and said, I'm done, I want to be done. How difficult was it for you to actually say that? Because we know how tough you are, we know what you've been through throughout your life, in terms of your back, your leg recently, and all the fights you've been through, to actually say that, how difficult was that for you? You know, I'm actually proud of my coaches. I know a lot of people are going against what they said and thinking – all this different stuff and it's easy to judge, but you never know what's happening in that moment. And at the end of the day, my coaches know me best. They know my toughness and they know what I can handle. And I trust my coaches with everything that I have. And I know they wouldn't put me in a situation that I can't handle. I was going through a moment where I was obviously frustrated because of the fact with my leg, I was scared to step in and actually let my hands go because the minute I would start to close the distance, Amanda would attack the leg. So it was easy easier for me to stay on the outside to evade any more leg kicks to try to avoid that pain. And it was easier for me to stay up against the cage to where I had some back support to be able to constantly lift my legs. Um, you know, and my other legs started taking the damage, but leg kicks, I mean, I've taken so much damage and other fights I've taken, I've done so much conditioning and practice to where those things don't phase me, but it was just, you know, those, those initial kicks really got me to a point to where I started to break for a second, and the minute that I turned around, I told my coaches that, and then I actually turned around, looked at my head coach, and looked him in the eyes. I knew I still had it within me, but uh, you know, there just comes a point where you just make a decision. And in the fifth round, it just we we were on the ground. I had butterfly guard. Sorry, it's really windy here. I had a butterfly guard, but it just really felt like my knee was going to explode. Um, there was just too much pain, so I couldn't really work from anything onto the ground. 
And uh, it was a frustrating point for me. And then she popped up, she dropped an elbow. And I was like, you know what, this, it's just, it's, it's, it's enough. Mm. So less than two days later, you agree with your coach's decision to say, no, let's go out there and fight. There, there are no hard feelings there. I agreed with my coaches as soon as the fight was done. I agreed with them in that moment because at the end of the day, the ball is still in my court. I could have easily waved off the fight. I could have bent down and tapped out, but I chose not to. I chose to pull my head out of my ass basically and not give up on myself because at the end of the day, when you give up, that's a, it's a whole different ball game there. You know, quitting found an option um, in that aspect. And in that moment, I was quitting on myself and that's when a coach steps in and they push their athlete. Would you have been mad at him if he actually listened to you? Do you feel like it's something that you would have regretted if they actually waved it off when you told them that you were done? I would have been, yeah, I would have been mad and I would have been more mad at myself. So I'm glad that my coaches didn't let me give up on myself. It's a weird timing thing because we don't always hear what's going on in the corner. Um, did you tell your coaches leading up to that point about your leg? Did they know how severely injured it was? Yeah, they knew. Um, they could tell from the minute that it happened. And uh, every time I sat down in between rounds, it took everything I had to stand back up from uh, that stool. So they were aware why. I, I guess because the reason I'm asking that is because I said that, um, you know, ultimately we know about the relationship, but I was wondering why your coach never asked you why you wanted out. Because you are so tough, I would imagine that's not a, a, a common thing for you to say. So I was wondering if they knew the state of your leg when you said that. Yeah, they know exactly. Like I said, I mean, your coaches know you best and I have a coaching staff that they're just not my coaches. Um, you know, they're my friends, my brothers, they're everything to me, every relationship that you can think possible. We're a family outside of this. And I know that they have my best interests at heart and they know me um, in the gym, especially better than I know myself sometimes. And in that moment, it was no secret. Like they knew what was going on. They were putting the ice on there in between rounds and um, you know, just really trying to uplift my spirits to keep pushing. But, uh, that was a tough one. The, get, the that kick was a game changer. I really thought my leg was in a different shape than what it was in, but I think Amanda just, she nailed it. Perfect. How long have you been with this coaching staff? Uh, I've been with my coaching staff since 2012. Okay, so it has been some time. It's been almost, uh, well, I guess you would say around six years. And um, I, I'm curious because one thing that a lot of people have also brought up is you have to know the fighter, right? It's hard for us to weigh in when we don't know the relationship. And they say, look, a lot of fighters, they say they want out during sparring. They say they don't want to come to sparring. This is kind of the relationship. Are you that kind of fighter that you need to be nudged? Are you the kind of fighter who, you know, fourth round in sparring, you say you don't want to do it, but then your coach sends you back out there and you're happy? You don't strike me as that kind of person, but just curious, just to try to get the lay of the land here. Is that the kind of relationship that you do have with your coach? Uh, you know, I'm the type of athlete that I like to be pushed. And there's sometimes that I can go in the gym and I might be tired. I might be lazy or sometimes it's just, you know, I mean, this sport, it's a grind and it's not always easy. Um, and whether it was fighting, whether it was basketball, whatever sport it was for me, I've always liked my coaches to push me. Um, sometimes further than I'll even push myself. And that's what makes me really go, you know? So it's kind of just in practice. I don't do those things, but they know the different gears that I have within me. And, um, so they'll keep pushing me and making things better. And, uh, so it was just kind of, you know, in that moment, um, they knew, they knew just to, just to push me because I wasn't done. I still had it in me and they knew not to let me give up on myself because I'd be more mad at myself. Have you ever been in that position before where you said that you wanted out of a fight and your coach has said no, or you thought about saying that has, has this ever happened to you before in your, in your actual fighting career, not in training, but in an actual fight? No, never. You know, I mean, of course you're going to have fights and every fight's going to be a battle and it's going to be a war. Um, this one, you know, and a lot of people are bringing up ring rust and saying whatever it is that you can go behind it, but it had nothing to do with that. I felt 100% going confident going into this fight. I felt great about everything, had a phenomenal camp. But just like I said, I mean, when you're out there and I have a high pain tolerance, I'm durable as hell. And um, it was just my leg, like, you know, it, it, the minute that she hit it, it's the way that it felt, it just, it was a game changer. And, uh, for me, pure heart came out in that fight because I went and pushed through the rest of those rounds, knowing that 
most likely my leg is broken again and I was going to just have to grind. And, you know, you- you're never going to understand that unless you're in the person's shoes. Mm-hmm. Are you able to walk on, on your, your two legs now or do you need crutches? Uh, everybody's been helping me around. I've been using a wheelchair to get okay. from uh, in my travel. And then uh, now we're once we get to the dock, we'll see what they say. But even when I broke my leg the first time, my every broken bone I've ever experienced in my life, when I broke my back, my first reaction, I jumped up and tried to walk. Like, I just, my pain tolerance, my durability is one of a kind. And so, uh, you know, it's hard for me sometimes to be like, my coaches will be like, are you injured or are you just sore? And I'm like, I don't ever know because uh, I, I really honestly can't read my body just because I can take so much pain. So, um, you know, the first time I broke my leg, I did the same thing. I stood back up and I walked to the vehicle and then they took me to the hospital and we got to the hospital and it went from there. And it was the same thing. I mean, I took that freaking kick and I stood back up and I can feel it. And I took that second kick and I wanted to just throw up and then uh, it was just going from there. But I had adrenaline and everything else pumping through me. And and, and of course, I just want to reiterate to you, um, because this was the first thing I said on the show today. I don't think anyone should use this to criticize you. I don't think this is an indictment on you. Anyone who thinks less of you because you said that is, is insane. The fact that you stood in a cage and fought and you do this for a living continuously, to me, you possess a different kind of DNA, you know, I think MMA fighters are the most courageous athletes on this planet. So I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of here. In fact, I wish it was more common that fights could be stopped in between rounds. Um, but, you know, in our sport, it seems to be a taboo thing. Um, so I just want to make that clear. I don't think anyone's coming after you or, or thinking that you're a quitter or thinks less of you as a fighter, if you know what I'm saying. No, I appreciate that. And you know what? I will always keep my head up high because at the end of the day, we're, there's very few of us who are out there chasing our dream. And just the fact that we step into that octagon, all of us are champions. It's not yes. easy what we do. It's the lifestyle that we live is not easy and the courage it takes. And it's easy for people to make judgments and say different things. But the fact of what we put our minds, bodies, and everything else through, I mean, those are true warriors. We're all true warriors. Uh, could I ask, how are your coaches handling this? Um, you know, they're, they're, they're not usually involved in a situation like this. Are, are they handling it okay? Are they taking this personally? Are they upset? Do they want to say anything? How are they handling it? Well, you know, my coaches are pretty emotional about the whole thing. Um, they, they're just as emotionally invested in this as I am. And it's not something that's easy on them. And especially when people are coming out there making the comments and stuff and, me and my head coach, we had a talk, and he's like, you know I have your best interest at heart. Like, I love you like you're my daughter. I would never put you in a bad situation. And I'm the one that had to talk him out of things because he was pretty devastated. And I told him, you you pushed me to be the better athlete. You didn't let me give up on myself because if I gave up on myself, it would be a whole different ball game." And so the fact that you were there for me because you know me best in these situations, like, I couldn't be more proud. And so... You know, they're, they're struggling, but uh, they just have to keep their heads up, too, because at the end of the day, they're a hell of a coaching staff, and I love them all. Um, and you said you had to talk them out of doing something. What did you have to talk them out of? Uh, well, I'm just saying emotionally. I had okay. to lift his spirits for him because it's an emotional toll on him, too. You know, it's it's not something that's easy for anybody. It's the same thing when I coach Tisha. Um, I know the risks that play into this, but... It's not easy. It's not an easy sport, whether you're a coach, whether you're just a teammate, or whether you're the actual fighter. Like it's, it, There's emotions everywhere. Do you regret saying that? Do you regret telling your coach that I'm done? Um, you know, I mean, I had a moment and sometimes, but I also like to verbally express myself, and I'm very close with my coaches, and I tell them everything. And, you know, in that moment, it, I obviously needed their encouragement for a second. So no, because if I would have held it in, I feel like it would have been a different ball game for the second. But the fact that I talked to them and then I got their words and I looked into their eyes and that trusting bond was there, like it gave me the courage to go back in and do what I needed to do. And by the way, was there a reason why you, you turned around and said it? Um, I, I was wondering if maybe you, you didn't want people to hear it or see it on camera. You turned around and, and said it to your corner. Was there a reason for that? Well, um, so my coaches like to alternate when they come into the octagon and, uh, the one that was in there with me, he, um, I told him that and he was like, no, don't give up on yourself, blah, blah, blah. But my head coach, 
um, was standing behind me. He came in the round before that. So that's when I turned around and looked at him okay. and he's the one that talked to me. So no, it had nothing to do with hiding anything. There's nothing to hide. I mean, you're in there, you're going to war and you have people there who are in your corner for a reason. And so, uh, no, it was just cause he was on the outside and I needed to talk to him. Okay. Uh, how would you describe the level of pain that you're in? Are you in an excruciating amount of pain still? Oh, hell yeah. The the experience in Brazil was terrible. I got zero pain meds while I was out there. Um, you know, my nose, everybody's like freaking out about my nose, but my nose looks a lot worse on TV. Everything always looks worse on TV than what it really is. Um, I just needed some stitches, and they weren't even going to stitch my nose in the emergency room. I sat there and was bleeding for about five hours until Tisha finally flipped out in the emergency room and told the doctors that they needed to do something Two different doctors came in and was looking at my nose, deciding whether or not they needed to stitch it when clearly it needed to be stitched. Um, we we just got zero answers. So and then they wanted me to turn around and stay in Brazil for two extra days for who knows why. And I told them the hell with that. I needed to come home and get the proper medical treatment because I need to know what's going on with my leg. Yeah. Is it fair to say you're not fighting in Brazil anytime soon again? Um, no. I mean, I'm always game for whatever, but uh, right now my health is more important. And uh, so we're just going to figure out what's going on and then uh, set that road to recovery. And Tisha's up next for an awesome fight. So uh, I'll go back into coaching mode. And, and two last quick things. Um, has the UFC been helpful throughout this process, the, the post-fight process that you said was frustrating? Do you feel like they were helping you? Um, you know, I mean, in... I don't think anybody was really aware of it. Uh, I talked to Donna a lot, and she was just like, why didn't somebody go with you to the hospital and this, that, or another? And I don't think everybody was realizing a lot of stuff that was happening. Um, now that uh, uh, everybody it came to light about the whole situation, they did awesome at getting my flight changed, getting things um, sped up so that way I can get home faster. And as soon as I landed back here in Colorado, um, all my doctor's appointments were already lined up so that way I can get checked out and stuff. So, I mean, that, that aspect has been awesome. Okay. That is great to hear. Last thing for you is, is the message to everyone, Raquel, including to people like me, calm the hell down. Uh, you are at peace with this. You're okay with this. You're happy. They made you fight in the fifth round. They, 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 they said, no, go out there is the message to just everyone chill out and, uh, and, 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 and keep the relationship between you two. Uh, you know, th that is it. You guys know each other and, and, and you're at peace with everything. Is that essentially what it boils down to here? Yeah, everybody needs to relax. The fight's a fight. And at the end of the day, we have our coaching staffs. So I've taken years to build up trust with uh, my coaching staff. And I know that I have awesome people in my corner. Um, you know, it's like I said, it's not an easy sport to go through and do. And sometimes things go your way. Sometimes things don't go your way. At the end of the day, it was a fucking awesome opportunity. And I'm proud that knowing what I went through in the first round that I freaking hung in there for as long as I did. And I'm proud of my coaches for being there for me and to ke to keep pushing me and not let me give up on myself because at the end of the day, quitting like that on yourself would have been, it would have been more brutal than actually my coaches, you know, if they would have sat there and threw the towel in instead of actually letting me make the decision that I made in the fifth round. Um, so, uh, you know, I mean, stop judging from the outside because uh, you'll never understand what goes on unless you're in, in our shoes and in our positions. Much respect to you, Raquel. Thank you so much for doing this, and I hope you get well soon. And, and of course, thanks for coming on and squeezing us in and, and, and clearing the, the air here. I hope it's not too serious of an injury that you're dealing with with your leg and, uh, and, and looking forward to seeing you back in there sooner than later. And, of course, good luck to Tisha in July as well. Really appreciate you doing this. Thanks so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Kel, are you there?